Hey, welcome back everybody. It's that time again. I've had the Gator for a year, so it's time to do a one-year review. I've had some pretty harsh things to say about the Gator over the course of the past year. Now the tides might be changing a little bit, but before I get to that review, giving you all those details, we're gonna do a little actual work with the Gator today. We're gonna haul this hunting blind from one side of the property to the other side using the yard glider. All right, so mission accomplished. We got it from point A to point B, and that was pretty darn easy. Now this handled pretty similar to a trailer. The only downside, of course, which some guys mentioned in a previous video, is you can't back up with it, right? So you wanna be very intentional about how you're navigating when you're going forward, because it's not gonna be an easy process to try to back up and reposition yourself. So we didn't have any issues. You know, there's a lot of tight turns, a lot of trees in the way, but you think about making those wide turns as you're going through with a trailer anywhere, same kind of concept with this. Yard Glider is one of those discount club members. So you go to their website, yardglider.com. You enter code GWT. You get 5% off of your order. They ship at UPS ground. They just ship like in a, they roll them up. So they just ship like this. They're really lightweight. You can pick this thing right up. There's virtually no assembly required. You can get these handles on here, these straps on there too for towing as well. I'm hoping pretty soon here to be dragging out a big buck on my yard glider. All right, enough of that. Let's talk about the Gator. Okay, so a little recap. This is a John Deere XUV865R. 
This is the HVAC cab, okay? So you have air conditioning and heat and a hard side cab on here. It's gonna be a 25 horsepower diesel, a Yanmar diesel engine. I didn't buy this new, I bought it pretty darn close to new. I think it had about 11 hours on it when I bought it from a dealer down in, in Indiana. It did come with a six way snow plow on the front as well as a salter that was in the bed. I sold the salter off immediately, I had no need for it and I don't think I'm gonna run the plow this year. I'm just really not. That's not my cup of tea. I have other tools that I want to handle with snow removal. So if you guys are looking for a V-plow, I don't know, maybe I'll sell it to you. Now, one of the reasons I don't really dig this plow a whole lot with this setup is that you have to shift the gator forward and backwards with your right hand and then also use the plow controls with that same hand. It's a pretty awkward setup. There's not really a convenient way to, to switch something over to your left hand, plus you have the steering wheel there too. It's just not an ideal setup. But if you've done much snow plowing, not with a truck, but any other piece of equipment, you know, let's take a tractor for example. You have one hand on the steering wheel, your feet moving the forward or backwards pedals, and then your right hand on the joystick controlling your snow push or your snow plow. You need a third hand to operate this gator, and you just don't have it because you have to use the transmission with your right hand and control the plow, and then your left hand's on the steering wheel. So that's the main reason it's a little bit lower on my list for snow removal. Now my Gator and I have had our ups and downs. Maybe it was a bit of unrealistic expectations or maybe a bit of underwhelming performance. Probably a combination of both. So I bought this Gator before I actually had my own piece of property, but I knew that was gonna be coming in the near future. We're actually standing on my own ground now that we have purchased uh, in the summer of 2021, but inventory is hard to find, right? So I bought this when I had an opportunity to do so. Now I've added on a few accessories and features to it that didn't come with it up front, We'll get to that in a little bit and where you can buy those. But if you follow my channel for any period of time, then you've probably seen the videos where this got stuck down in some frozen mud by a lake and it took um, days to get out. That wasn't the only problem there. It took days to get out, but it also broke the axle off, broke a tie rod. It was an absolute nightmare. And it just left a really bad impression with me and it made me feel like this thing is not useful for much of anything. So that was last, February, I think, when all of that went down. And after getting it fixed, I pretty much let this thing just sit in my parking lot and didn't use it. Put it up for sale half-heartedly, not really trying too hard to sell it, but then we bought the property. And since that time, once we've been able to blaze some trails and really get this property opened up in a, in a different way to navigate and go about, this Gator has proven to be very reliable, very comfortable, very useful with the bed in there and everything else to take multiple passengers along, equipment along, all in one fell swoop, just like we did today. We were carrying along all the camera equipment, carried along a hunting blind with a yard glider, carried myself too, right? So it's just a lot of usefulness out of one piece of equipment. And with these chilly days, you know, we're in the low to mid thirties, I think right now, it's nice to have that heat to turn it on, crank it up, climb in there and and warm up for a little bit when you're trying to do a project. Maybe you're not out shooting some film like we are today, but maybe you're out cutting some firewood or maybe tackling a fence repair or just doing something else on your grounds. It is really nice in all seasons to have the heat and the air conditioning. So I say all this to say that the Gator is growing on me, all right? <laughs> so not to say it's a perfect machine. There's still a few major flaws that I don't really think you can do anything about, but it's a very comfortable ride. You know, this has the uh, the push button, you know, the, the power tilt bed on there. You can get the manual if you want to. These tires are great, although we did have one flat already. Because of that, I'm gonna get a spare tire, we're gonna get a mount and everything and put it in here. There's all sorts of accessories and different ways to customize these gators, and that's one of the things that we're gonna get from 247parts.com. They're another GWT discount club member, and so that's where you can get things like these mirrors if you wanna add them on, if you wanna get a brush guard up front, if you wanna get LED work lights, or if you wanna get new belts or filters or fluids, whatever you want, not just for your gators, but you can get it for your lawn mowers and for your, your 1025, your 4066, whatever you want, your zero turn mowers too, 247parts.com. Again, you enter code GWT, you're gonna get your savings. Now me, I'm a flatlander, okay? These hills that you have out here, yeah, they might not be much, but it's really hard to find a flat piece of ground. There's just a lot of hills throughout the woods. And my confidence has been slowly building back up. You know, I've been able to take this gator on a little bit of incline side to side. I've been taking it up hills, which it'll make it up hills. But the problem with this engine, the gas engine does not have this same problem. <laughs> but you have to basically floor the pedal to the floorboard in order to feel like you're going anywhere. It's almost like you feel like you're going to fly right through the tree that's in front of you, except you're just gonna slow, slowly creep along and climb. It's a very odd sensation. You don't really get used to it. I, I think my brother would attest to the same thing as well. There's just, I don't know why they designed it that way. It's a very sluggish, slow system that is, um, 
I don't think there's anything you can do to change it. So this is a Warren winch, uh, let's see, 45-S. It's a 4,500 pound winch. Doesn't really have anything to do with a gator per se, right? But it is the biggest winch that we could put on there at the time that was offered when I purchased it. And as became pretty evident in one of those videos when we got stuck, I don't know anything about winches. I assumed 4,500 pounds meant that I could use this to pull a 4,500 pound piece of equipment or a tree log or whatever the heck I wanted. Well, that's not the case. This winch failed us miserably when we were stuck down there by the lake. We did try using some snatch blocks to increase the pulling power. That didn't do anything. We ended up breaking this winch cable off. It just was completely worthless for us. And, you know, there's a lot of feedback, a lot of comments down there about how winches work and, and how you only get the maximum power based on the amount of, of loops that you have wrapped around. I don't really care about any of that. I feel like this was 4,500 pound rated winch and it did nothing for us. It didn't even begin to move the machine. It was a colossal failure. But if there's one cool thing about this winch and with this gator in particular is that you've got a cable up here on the front, you have another one in the back, so you can mount this winch in either location, front or back, which, you know, depending on how you're stuck or where you're stuck, could be useful to move that from point A to point B to pull yourself this way or that way, assuming it has enough power. Now, a few things I really haven't um, grown fond of too much, but they haven't really affected anything. You know, I do like, I should say, the molded plastic panels that are on the steel frame body, but you can see the, the fading, like the graying of the material. It looked like that essentially when I got it, and it's not getting any better. We previously talked about this odd location for the air filter, and they do sell a conversion kit to wrap it up and get it up here into a higher position so that you don't get any mud or snow or water down in there. Now, fortunately, I haven't had any problems with anything clogging this up or too much dust or dirt or anything else, but should I have to pay the extra money to get a conversion kit to reroute it up top? No! And then we've shown it before, our battery is tucked down underneath there. Fortunately, I have not had a dead battery yet. I'm really looking forward to the day that I do because that is the biggest pain in the butt to get to. But if I ever need to mess with that battery, that may be the day I roll this gator off a cliff. So if you ask me, which many of you have, would I buy it again if I had the opportunity? Well, a couple notes on that. I would not get the diesel version. I got the diesel version because I thought it would be a lot more helpful having diesel tractors and skid steers and everything else that I have out here. But it's just too sluggish for me. The gas version would be the way to go. I would highly recommend that. I do have another UTV on order and it is not a John Deere Gator. I'm actually getting a Polaris North Star, the HVAC cab, but I'm getting the two row version, okay? And so I ordered that I think back in August. They're telling me I'm not gonna have it until March. So we're gonna be using the Gator all through the course of winter until that one gets in. But with my family, it would be nice to have two rows to get everybody in there at one time if we wanna go driving around the property or doing whatever we wanna do. That is gonna be a gasoline version as well, so it should be a little peppier. So who knows, maybe when the time comes, we can get you a comparison on those two. So is this Gator the perfect machine? No, it's not, but it gets the job done. It is growing on me. You know, I feel like I paid $35,000 for this thing. Not brand new, it was used. 11 hours on it, so it was almost new, but with that plow, with that salter, but that's a heck of a lot of money. So I guess with that comes some pretty high expectations, and I don't wanna say my expectations are lowering down, but the usefulness is increasing, and so it's helping to kind of soften the blow. All right, well, I've been standing out in this cold a little bit too long. It's time to hop in the Gator. I have a few spots I need to check out on the property, and really, this UTV is the right tool to use. I don't wanna use a tractor. I don't wanna use a skid steer. I don't wanna walk. I got a lot of area to cover. So it's not the fastest tool, but it's quick enough. All right, well, we're gonna get to it. So make sure you check out Yard Glider and 24 seven parts, use code GWT. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts. Subscribe to see more tractor videos and visit goodworkstractors.com if you're looking for something for your tractor. Thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.